let's take a look at compound interest. Owen has $15 in a savings account. The interest is 10% compounded annually. To the nearest cent, how much interest will he earn in two years? Use the formula where B is the balance, the final amount, P is the principal, the starting amount, R is the interest rate expressed as a decimal, and T is the time in years. All right, well notice they gave us the formula where B is the balance or the total final amount, P is the principal, the starting amount, R is the interest rate expressed as a decimal, and T is the time in years. Okay, so we can say that B or the total amount of balance that he's gonna have is equal to, well the principal is $15. The principal means the starting amount. So I'm gonna say 15, times, now writing that next to the parenthesis also means times. So one plus, now the interest rate they told us was 10%. We wanna express that as a decimal. Well remember you move the decimal point two places to the left, so as a decimal that would be 0 0.10. And then our exponent is the time in years, and they told us it's gonna be in the account for two years. Okay, now you have to think about order of operations when you work this out. Remember, exponents happen before multiplication. So I'm going to leave the 15 outside. Now before I can do the exponent, I have to do the parentheses, right? So we're thinking PEMDAS, parentheses, then exponents, then any multiplication or division, and then finally, if we had any, any addition or subtraction. Okay, so in the parentheses, 1 plus 0.10 is 1.10, and that's still squared or raised to the second power. Now I'm ready to do my exponent. So I want to say, well, what is 1.10 squared? And that gives me 1.21. So this is going to be 15 times 1.21. And then finally, I'm ready to multiply. Okay, and I get a final balance of 1815. Okay, so that means after two years, that $15 that he originally put in the bank is now $18.15 because of the interest that has been added to it. Now, you really have to be careful and go back and read the question to see what they're asking for, because we did all of that work, so it's really tempting to put 1815 as our answer. But notice, they asked us how much interest will he earn? Okay, how much interest will he earn? So this 1815 is not the interest, it's the interest and the principal together. So remember, the principal was $15 of that, so the interest is just the extra amount he made on top of the $15. So to figure that out, I would have to subtract the 15 he started with to see how much extra he earned in interest. So if I take my total of 1815 and I subtract $15, that means that he earned $3.15 in interest. Matthew has $15 in a savings account. The interest is 25% compounded annually. To the nearest cent, how much interest will he earn in one year? Okay, and again, they gave us the formula, B equals P times one plus R to the T power, where B is the balance or the final amount, P is the principal or the starting amount, R is our interest rate as a decimal, and T is our time in years. All right, so let's plug all of our information into this formula, B, equals P times one plus the rate raised to the power of the time. Okay, so I don't know the final balance yet, so I'm gonna leave that as B. I do know the principal or starting amount was $15. So I'm gonna put 15 in for P. 
and then I have one plus, now the rate was 25%. So as a decimal, if I move that two decimal places, that would be 0 0.25. And then my exponent of t is the time. So we're talking about one year, so my exponent is going to be one. Okay, just like last time, I'm thinking order of operations. So I'm gonna start with what's inside the parentheses. 1.025 is 1.25. And then that's still raised to the first power. Now I do my exponent before I multiply. Okay, so 15 times, now 1.25 raised to the first power is still 1.25, right? Raising something to the first power doesn't change it at all. And then my final step here, I'm, I need a little more room, so I'm just gonna continue over here. My final step is to multiply 15 times 1.25, which is 1875. Okay, so that means the final balance in the bank account was $18.75. Now the question was how much interest will he earn, not what will his total balance be. So that $18.75 includes the original principal, $15, as well as the interest. So if I want to know how much of that was interest, I need to subtract the $15 he started with, and that should leave me with how much interest he made. Okay, and that's gonna leave me with $3.75. So we know Matthew made $3.75 in interest. Matthew has $15 in a savings account that earns 20% interest compounded annually. To the nearest cent, how much will he have in one year? Okay, and we're gonna use that same formula. Okay, so when I set this up, I'm gonna say the balance or B is equal to the principal P, which we know was 15. Well, actually, let's write our formula first. Principal times one plus the rate raised to the T power. It always helps to write that out first, and then you can see exactly where you're plugging all those numbers. Okay, so B or the balance we know the principal was 15, so that's going to go in place of P. 1 plus the rate they told us was 20%. As a decimal, that would be 0 0.20. And my exponent of T stands for time. So we're talking about one year of time, so my exponent is 1. Okay, just like before, I'm thinking about order of operations, so I'm going to do what's inside the parentheses first. So leaving that 15 alone for just a minute, inside the parentheses, 1 plus 0.20 gives me 1.20. And that's still raised to the first power. An exponent of 1 doesn't change our number, so 1.20 to the first power is still 1.20. So I have 15 times 1.20. which gives me 18 even. Okay, so that means the new balance is 18 or $18. Okay, now notice the question to the nearest cent, how much will he have? So how much he will have is the total balance. So that $18 is our final answer or the balance, the total amount he's going to have at the end of one year. Madeline has $25 in a savings account that earns 15% interest compounded annually. To the nearest cent, how much will she have in one year? And again, we have that same formula. All right, so let's plug everything in. Our formula is B, or the balance, is equal to the principal times one plus the rate raised to a power of the time. Okay, and we're gonna solve to figure out how much she will have, which is the balance. Okay, well the principal or starting amount was 25, so we'll put that in place of P. 
The rate they told us was 15%, and remember you have to turn that into a decimal, 15% is the same as 0 0.15, and the exponent is the time in years, and they told us it's going to be one year, so that's going to be raised to the first power. Now following our order of operations, we're going to start with what's inside the parentheses, so leaving this 25 alone for a minute, 1 plus 0 0.15 gives us 1.15 and then that's raised to the first power. Now raising something to the first power doesn't do anything, so that's gonna be 25 times 1.15. Okay, and now we multiply. 25 times 1.15 gives us 28.75. So the balance, or the total amount, would be $28 and 75 cents. And notice that was the question, how much she will have, which we know is another way to say the total balance. Mason has $20 in a savings account. The interest is 10% compounded annually. To the nearest cent, how much interest will he earn in one year? Okay, and then again, we have that same formula. Okay, well, setting up our formula, B is equal to P times 1 plus R raised to the T power. Okay, well, we don't know the balance. We know the principal or the starting amount was $20. And then we're going to say 1 plus, the rate was 10%. So if we write that as a decimal, that's going to be 0.10. And then T represents the time they asked us to figure out how much he's going to earn in one year. So we're going to put one. Now following our order of operations, we're going to do what's inside the parentheses first. 1 plus 0 0.10 gives us 1.10. And that's still raised to the first power. Now an exponent of 1 doesn't do anything, so 1.10 to the first power is just 1.10. So we're going to multiply 20 times 1.10, which gives us $22, right? It came out to be 22 even. Since we're talking about money, we know that's $22 and zero cents. Okay, now in this question, they asked us to figure out how much interest he will earn. So this is not the interest, $22, that's the total balance, meaning the principal and the interest together. So if the total balance or total amount in the account at the end of one year was $22, well, if we subtract the starting amount, the starting amount was $20, that should tell us how much interest he earned. Okay, well, $22 minus $20 means that he earned $2 in interest.